Hi, Dan Kurz, DK Analytics. It is still July 23rd. I'm coming to you from Niederwending in Switzerland. I want to have an adjunct or an addendum to the uh, video that I created earlier today, not too long ago, in fact, about uh, precious metals prices blinking red. What I didn't go over is the kind of upside potential in U.S. dollar terms that I think precious metals have, gold and silver. Uh, let's uh, go at this two ways. Let's say confidence in paper money, fiat money, counterfeit currency, because it's being printed way beyond value creation or economic growth for a long time. And it's also financing the unfinanceable, the deficits and the, and, and the debt that otherwise would require much higher interest rates if the central banks, the world didn't vacuum it all up. That's their monetary based bloat. Right? Uh, let's take a look for just a second at what would happen if, in fact, fiat money central banks had to resort to reinstilling confidence in their currencies by backing it with gold, right? By backing it with gold. Silver can play a role here. It has historically from Persia to Rome to the British pound sterling to the U.S. to U.S. constitutional money, the U.S. currency until 1964, which was silver back. But let me stay with gold and then parlay that into silver. Um, if confidence is lost in counterfeit currency, no back, no backing currency. And let's take a look at what the global M1 figure is. I get this by taking uh, the M1 statistics of leading nations uh, across the world, basically the leaders in Asia, uh, Japan, China, India, the EU, uh, the UK, the United States, uh, Russia, and Brazil. All right, and if you got all those, and you, though you've got the majority of global GDP right there, um, you're looking at about 32.3 trillion dollars worth convert them into dollars of global M1. All right. And there's official sector reserves, that is government-owned uh, gold, stood at 33,919 metric tons. If you convert that into troy ounces by multiplying it by 32,151, um, you're going to uh, get the amount of gold that is available and you take that and divide it into the monetary, I'm sorry, the M1, the global N1, and then multiply it times 0.4, and that's how you get to the required global gold price per troy ounce that would back, all right, the globe's M1 with a 40% backing. And when you divide that 32.3 trillion by the troy ounce equivalent of 33,919 metric tons in official sector reserves, uh, in essence, central bank ownership, you end up with $11,848 uh, gold price, right? And if you now take this and compare it with silver, which in the post-monetary era of silver, silver uh, to gold ratio has been about 50 to 1. And, and let's say we go from a current 80, 82 to 1 to, uh, say, 50 to 1. We divide that 11,848 by 50, and we get a $236 silver price per troy ounce. And that is something that governments, central banks, really they're one and the same, sorry, but it's true, 
may have to resort to ultimately. I think they will because there is no other way out. Historically, it's always happened. Why should it be different this time? Well, take that as the necessity uh, plan or the, uh, the ultimate response or the only response that's going to work. But what happens if investors take us to much higher levels before that? which I went over in the prior video, very small exposure, very limited supply, very additional, very small additional mine supply every year. Um, but we also have something else and people like to look back and I'm gonna focus in on silver here to old highs. Now, not real price terms, but nominally stated, right? The silver, silver has had two, well, it's had a double top close to $50 a share. Once in 1980, the, 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 the Hunt Brothers efforts to corner the silver price. Uh, then in 2011, I think, yes, it was 2011, also around 50. And if we can pierce what some people call a double top to the upside, we're going to have tremendous room to run much, much higher. And that room obviously will be even more expansive, assuming that uh, investors regain a sense of silver as a safe haven asset, as a monetary asset, which is bound to happen given its history. Uh, and, and for this reason, we've got two kind of bookends here. We've got the private market overwhelming manipulation, overwhelming ignorance, and we've got uh, the central banks that want to continue to control the world's monetary system, but can only do it if they do the unthinkable, and that is bring back gold backing, and then de facto, some places perhaps silver backing, but the central banks don't need to own it. The people will, will gladly take it and use it as constitutional money in the United States, potentially with states moving that direction, or use it as barter trade in increasingly underground transactions if governments get too toxic, right? I wanted to add those two points in a, in a brief follow-up video, and uh, I guess I wanna call this, or should call it, where can gold and silver prices go? I think gold, if we have to reset the world's monetary system on it at 40% backing, which has worked historically, we're looking at $11,800 or so dollar gold price before more money printing ending up in M1 via the multiplier, which is, is now starting to rise or at least level out and go up. And that in turn at a 50 to one silver to gold ratio would get us to $236 silver price per troy ounce. Recall that it comes out of the ground at nine to one. And historically over 600 years during the British sterling, a silver backed currency, uh, silver traded roughly 10 to 15 times gold. That is, I'm sorry, gold was 15, 10 to 15 times as valuable as silver or you needed roughly 10 to 15 ounces of silver per ounce of gold. If, if we went to that kind of range, then obviously instead of the 50, a ratio of 50 silver to one ounce of gold to 10 or 15, you could do the math yourself, we would be well north of $236 per troy ounce that a 50 to one silver to gold ratio would bring assuming the world had to resort back to gold-backed money at a 40% M1 coverage ratio. Hope that makes sense. Thanks for tuning into this brief follow-up. Uh, that's all from here. Over and out. Bye-bye.